By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Tribal War. So this was a tournament that was held right here on Timmy Talks for the patrons and channel members where I challenged them to make a tribal deck. So I asked them to make a deck consisting out of 12 creatures that had the same creature type. Of course, you could use more than 12, but 12 creatures was the bare minimum. And in today, we're going to watch Trout, who is, of course, on Merfolk, because if you call yourself Trout, you got to be on a fish deck, right? So he's playing with at least 12 Merfolk, probably more. And he's taking on Neil, and Neil is playing Zombies, so his deck is black, and he's on Zombies for a tribe. Now, the cool thing is, uh, to make more tribes possible, we've included the sets Fallen Empire, Homelands, and a selection of cards from Ice Age as well. Now, if you're curious about all the ins and outs of the rule set, please check uh, the description below because there you will find information about the specific rules. So maybe if you're thinking about organizing a tribal tournament yourself and you want to do it with older sets, you know, have a, have a look at our rule set. Maybe it's something for you or maybe you see things that we missed and let us know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Now I'm going to start with the deck deck section. As always, you can skip this section as well. The easiest way to do this is by going uh, to the description below and check out the timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. But as for now, I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm actually going to start with the zombies. Let's take a look at Neil's zombie deck. Let's have a look at the deck of Neil. This is Ice Zombies and uh, I'm, I'm kind of loving this deck because it reminds me of my own zombie deck, my revised only zombie deck. It's, it it's kind of works the same way, right? You've got a zombie master. There are four in this deck that gives all zombies swamp walk and regeneration. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your opponent has a swamp and that's where evil presence comes in. So we see four evil presence in the deck. So you give your opponent a swamp, then you play your zombie master giving all your zombies swamp walk and you can basically kill your opponent with your zombies because he cannot block them, right? And um, to kind of make the deck even stronger, he's added a land removal package with sinkhole, with blight. And when you're removing all those lands, of course, cards like paralyze become really, really good. Paralyze a card for one and enchant creature, Tap target creature, that creature doesn't untap unless you pay four. Now I've called this deck Ice Zombies for a reason because of the Ice Age zombies in the deck. He's playing with eight zombies from the Ice Age expansion. Let's just kind of discuss those because maybe you're not that familiar with these creatures. So the first one is a two black and one to cast for a two two. It's called a Kangrenous Zombies. And it's got a pretty cool ability. You can tap and sacrifice it and then the zombies deal one damage to each creature and player. And if you control any uh, snow covered swamps, it deals two damage instead. What I like about this is there's this nice synergy with Zombie Master, right? Because if all your creatures have regeneration, you can just regenerate your creatures. And talking about regenerate your creatures, uh, we've got Limdul's Cohort. That's the other um, zombie from Ice Age in this deck, which is a 2-3 three for 3 mana. So it's got an extra toughness point. Um, and it's got this... Yeah, interesting ability. It says creatures blocking or blocked by the cohort cannot regenerate this turn. So this is kind of funny because he's also playing with, of course, the, the zombies we just looked at that's going to deal damage to everything on the board. So then your opponent cannot regenerate if they have a regeneration creature. And that ability also works quite well with Neverneral's disc, right? You blow up the disc, you can regenerate everything, but your opponent can't because maybe it just blocked your cohort. So, I mean, that's kind of like innocent fun. And I'm a big fan of these decks because they kind of remind me of the type of decks and the type of synergy that, that we used to build uh, when I started playing the game back in 95. So a beautiful deck. Thank you, Neil, for bringing it to the table. Now let's look at the deck of your opponent, Trout. And here we see the deck of Trout. Now this is looking like a powerhouse, to be honest. I mean, it's got power. It's got, you know, did I say it's got power? It's got power. It's got Library of Alexandria. It's got four factories. And yes, there are also some merfolks in there. But I mean, it's got the control package, four counter spells, a mana drain, brain geyser, and also a card merchant scroll is really good. Merchant scroll, a card from Homelands, I restricted it for this format, but what makes it so good, you can use your merchant scroll to fetch your ancestral recall. And of course you can also use it to get some more counter magic going. So merchant scroll is a super good card. Um, what I also really like about this deck and why I think it's super powerful are the four control magics. In this format, Tribal Wars, you know your opponent is going to play with at least 12 creatures. So that means there's there are a lot of targets 
for your control magics. And in this matchup, the opponent is not playing with any enchantment removal. So it's going to be really tough for Neil to kind of deal with uh, with this deck by Trout. What I like about this deck, by the way, are the two Sea Singers. I think it's super cool to see somebody playing with Sea Singer. Sea Singer, uh, two blue and one to cast for an 0-1 creature from Fallen Empires. You can tap it to take control uh, of any target creature, but your opponent does need to have islands or else you cannot do that. And when you take control, by the way, you can keep the Sea Singer tapped to keep control. Now, how are you going to make sure that your opponent has islands? You play with Phantasmal Terrain. So I'm really happy to see Phantasmal Terrain. Two blue to cast for an enchant land and it turns any land into any basic you want. So not just an island. I used to think Phantasmal Terrain could only make an island when I was like a kid, but then I started rereading it years later, realizing, hey, wait a minute, you can also make a swamp or a mountain on the side of your opponent or, or on your own island for that matter. Uh, it's it, That made it a lot better, but I think in this deck, of course, uh, you know, Trout wants to use it to make islands on the side of his opponent so that he can start using his Sea Singers. And of course, uh, his island walk will work because he's playing with four Lord of Atlantis and Lord of Atlantis, two blue to cast gives, gives plus one plus one to all the merfolk and island walk to all the merfolk as well. So that makes it really strong. Um, I briefly talked about the counter de department, but I also want to highlight the four remove souls in this deck. Remove soul, a counter spell from legends that can only counter creatures. Again, it's really good in this type of tournament because you know every deck is going to be really creature heavy. And remember, even after sideboarding, you always have to have 12 creatures of the same creature type in your deck. So I think it's going to be super tough for Neil actually to beat this blue deck. In my opinion, I think Trout is really the favorite. I'm not saying Neil cannot win. I think after sideboarding, I would definitely, you know, board in those Neveneros discs, try to kind of wait for the right moment to cast it that is not countered, and then try to use it at the right moment. You know, you always have a chance. I'm not saying that. But when I'm looking at this list... I, I just think Trout is the strong favorite. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite is, by the way, in this matchup, the Zombies or the Merfolk. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Please let me know in the comments below and let me know why. So now that we've talked about both of these decks, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. It is time to go to game number one. Game number one, here we go. Say so a best of three between Neil and his Mono Black Zombies versus the Mono Blue deck of Trout and his Merfolk. Starting off with a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, turn one. Can he find a Lord of Atlantis, turn two? That would be uh, kind of tough for Neil. Neil playing a Swamp here, tapping it sideways. There's a Dark Ritual. What are we going to see? There is the Walking Dead and a Paralyze. What an opener here for Neil. You don't see that often. So Walking Dead is a 1-1 one, one from Legends, one black to regenerate. And he's passing the turn here. And look at that, the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, of course, stays tapped because of the Paralyze. Trout has to pay four to untap it, which is pretty steep. And Trout now a little bit in the tank here, starting uh, playing a Mox here. I thought it would play an Island. There's a Mox Emerald and a Mox Pearl, and just a pass, cannot find a second Island. And that is, of course, so important for his strategy. He's playing four Counter Spells, of course, four Lord of Atlantis as well, a Mana Drain. He really needs a double blue. There we see, oh, an evil presence. Can he counter this somehow? I don't think he can. So the evil presence is going to be turned into swamp. He doesn't have power sync, for example. He does have a remove soul, but it only works against creatures. There's the attack. Wow, this evil presence was really, really good by Neil. There is a chaos orb. Is he actually going to flip maybe on his evil presence or on the evil presence of Neil, I should say, because he really needs blue, of course, playing a mono blue deck. There's the attack again by Neil, putting Trout on 18. He cannot find another land, though, passing the turn. There we see on end step the activation of the orb. He's going to flip on the evil presence. And it is a hit. Beautiful flip here by Neil. Evil presence is gone. I think this is really important for Trout, having access to blue again. There's just a pass, though. I'm sure he's waiting for a second blue. There is... Oh, an evil presence again! Oh, this is so bad here for Trout, but really good by Neil. Making sure that uh, Trout doesn't have access to the blue source. Okay, there's a Sapphire. If he can find like an Ancestral Recall, he can dig a little bit deeper and find a second blue source. And remember, Neil is playing mono black, so he doesn't have a lot of answers to artifacts. 
putting Trout here on 16. He's going quite slow. He does have three lands now, but unable to find another zombie. No zombie master. No Limdul's cohort. And I think if you're Neil, you really want to take advantage of this momentum that Trout is offering him here. He needs to put some bodies on the board, but he cannot find it though. Three cards in hand and pass the turn. Trout on 15 at the moment. And Trout also just passing the turn. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing Trout is just waiting for a second blue. And I think Neil maybe has a lot of answers in hand. Remember, he is playing with four sinkhole and four blight. But did, he doesn't really have a target for those at the moment. Passing the turn back again to Trout, who's now on 14. So that Walking Dead is doing business. There's the second blue. But just a pass here. I was expecting to see some action. Perhaps Trout's hand is filled with counter magic. That could be the case. Two blue. There's a sinkhole. I'm expecting a counter spell. No counter spell from Trout. I'm really starting to wonder what's in that hand of his. He's now dropped to 13. I was so expecting a counter spell of some sort. And Trout now. A little bit in the tank, it seems. What can he do? I mean, at least he's got time enough. The only threat on the board is Neil's, uh, Neil's uh, his uh, walking dead. Playing a time walk here, basically cycling it away. And there is a strip mine. I mean, in this matchup, I guess there could be a, a situation where Trout wants to strip mine his own swamp. Not, not right now, of course, but... That could be a situation. And there we see the remove soul. Okay, I kind of expected this remove soul on the zombie master. Zombie master gives all zombies swamp walk and regenerate. And it's now in the graveyard. Ooh, this is actually pretty good. The Mishra's factory. I wonder if Neil has another way to kill the... Uh, the factory he is playing of course with sinkholes maybe another evil presence could work a blight could be annoying for him but you know a blight it is annoying yes but not that annoying so what happens with blight is when the land gets tapped then it's destroyed but of course trout doesn't have to tap it so he's got the options open not to tap it and that kind of stops neil's attack here there is another factory. I mean, so those factories are really kind of gonna gonna help Trout. And there's a tap for three. Limdul's cohort, a two-three creature. And I guess Trout's asking, what does this card do? So it's a card from Ice Age. You don't see it that often here on the channel. That's because for this tournament we've allowed certain cards from Ice Age if they could uh, help you building your tribal deck. There's a remove soul though, so I guess Trout just had a lot of remove souls in hand and he's kind of using them here. Counter the Zombie Master and now the Limdul's Cohort. And now both players are kind of stuck here. Trout is still on 12, which is not too bad and he's getting so much time from Neil here to rebuild or actually to build something, not to rebuild. And Neil is trying to find a way through. Here we see the uh, zombies from Ice Age as well. Two, two zombies. You can tap and sacrifice it to deal one damage to each player and each creature. And if you have snow-covered swamps, I think Neil has them here. Two of those. It deals two damage to everything. So again, it's, um, it's a card that could come in handy. I think not right now. But especially when it deals two points of damage, it can wipe away the Lord of Atlantis and all the Merfolk. So it could be a really good board wipe. And uh, after Trout kind of asking, what does it do? Then he decides to counter it. Another remove soul. So his hand was full of remove souls. And uh, that happens sometimes, of course. So he's finding another card here in hand, a little bit in the tank. I would have to say, I think Trout is kind of, you know, controlling the match with the counter magic and the uh, factories in play. 
He can just wait and see. He can just pass and, and wait until he draws into maybe another island to start casting his Smurfolk and take over the match. And I think if you're Neil, you really want to find a way to destroy those Mishra's factories and at least start attacking with your uh, Walking Dead. And Neil is just going to pass, it seems, four cards in hand. That is not great for him. Looks like Trout is thinking about playing something on the end step here of Neil. No, he's not. He's taking his turn. Taking it very, very slowly, though. That's like the slow, slowest draw I've seen in a while. There is a, a, a Vodalian soldier, a 1-2 creature from Fallen Empires, finding the board. And I mean, I, I think if you're Neil, you can slowly start thinking about attacking next turn. You know, you could animate your factory and attack with the soldier, attack with both of those. And, uh, you know, at least deal one point of damage. You know, damage is damage. Let's see what Neil can do. So Neil playing a Paralyze on the soldier. Oh, man. Those merfolk are going nowhere. And uh, there we see Trout untapping. I mean, he needs a Tranquility, but he's not on green, of course. And just passing the turn here to Neil. I think we're in for a long game here. And tapping three. There is a Zombie Master. And that Zombie Master gives Swamp Walk to the Walking Dead. Are we going to see a Counterspell by Trout? If not, this is giving an opening to Neil to start dealing some damage again. Now remember, Trout already played three removed souls. He plays with a full playset, but three of those are gone already. And he's playing with four counter spells, but he doesn't have double blue. There's the attack. It resolves. Trout's going to 11. It looks like we've got something here. So Trout now on 11. And that means almost halfway. I mean, it's going slow, but at least... Neil's attack is back up. And I think Trout is still waiting for the second blue. He is playing with, for example, four control magic. So if he can just find another blue and has a control in hand, he can just take over, you know, the zombie master or the walking dead for that matter. So Trout being a little bit in the tank here, playing another merfolk of the Pearl Trident. There we see an untapped by Neil. Does Neil have another Paralyzed? That would be hilarious. I mean, Trout does have enough mana to start untapping some of the creatures. There's the attack. And I guess Trout's going to go to 10 here because he cannot block because he has that swamp there. That's a turned around card. Used to be an island. But now there's an evil presence on it. So it's a swamp. Trout on 10, and there is a pass, I guess. Five cards in hand for Neil. And Trout, you know, still stuck with only that one blue source with the Mock Sapphire. That must be frustrating for him. And I said in the uh, in the, the deck tech section of this video that I think that the Merfolk deck is a very strong favorite when I just looked at the cards, all the power in there, um, you know, the fact that Merfolk is pretty quick as well, all the control magics in there. But of course, if you cannot find the islands or if the islands that you do play are getting destroyed or turned into swamps, it's going to be a tough match. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So Trout, I guess he's trying to find a way out of this. At least the only pressure that Neil has on the board is that one walking dead with Swamp Walk. So, I mean, Trout's on a 10-turn clock. I'm sure in 10 turns he's going to find something. There's the pass by Trout. So Neil's going to draw card number six. His hand's also pretty full. Going to tap three. Ooh, there's another Zombie Master. Now, this is critical because the Zombie Master's give each other Swamp Walk. That means he can hit Trout for three, put him on seven. And I mean, that's going to turn up the clock significantly. 
There's the attack, three points of damage here for Trout, unless he can do something. I don't think he can with his deck, to be honest. And remember, all his zombies also have regeneration for one. So, for example, he can play a Psionic Blast and Neil can just regenerate. He doesn't even lose his Zombie Master. So it looks like Trout's really in the tank here, going through his options. I don't think he has many. And even if you play a Psionic Blast, yes, it means that you know, uh, Neil will have to tap the creature so it doesn't deal any damage anymore, you know, because you're regenerating it. But uh, uh, you still take two damage from your own Psionic Blast, so it doesn't really help you get any further. Okay, he's going to use the Strip Mine. Oh, he's going to strip his own, and then he's going to animate, and now he's going to block. And look at that, he's also animating the other factory. That is interesting. And now we see the regeneration by Neil. It's going to regenerate both creatures. But of course, the strip mine is gone, though. I don't really understand why Trout's strip mine is still on the board because you got to sack the strip to destroy your own land. Exactly, now it's gone. There we see another factory, and this is pretty brutal. For Neil, because, you know, this is looking like a factory war, and that is just really tough. Looks like he's just going to pass for now. So if you're Neil, you really want to find another evil presence. But this was a great move by Trout taking care of his own island here. I mean, you have to do what you have to do. Another evil presence. Ay, 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 ay. That is so tough. And again, Trout only has that single blue. Maybe his hand is full of counter magic, but he can't play it. He needs a second blue source. So this is, this is pretty devastating. And there we see an attack. Five points of damage coming in, putting Trout on five or not. Animating it doesn't matter. He cannot block it. Animating another one. They all have Swamp Walk. It's impossible to block. And we see Neil here pointing out the evil presence. Trout can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's just got to take the damage. Going to go down to five. And next turn might be his last. Realizing it now as well. Dropping down to five life. And that would be kind of spectacular in my opinion if Neil would take the win here. In game number one, now remember, it's only game number one, of course. We are going to get sideboards and we're going to go into game two after this. But things are looking really good for Neil. Trout needs to just get rid of his own land, but he's already used his strip mine earlier in the game to do that trick. He's not playing with recall, so he cannot get back the strip mine. He's also already used his Chaos Orb earlier in the game on an Evil Presence. So this is really an Evil Presence MVP game. Of course, it's not. we're not done yet. You know, Trout still has one turn. So there's that factory that's now the... We see the yellow sleeve. That's the uh, Evil Presence Swamp now. So the factory turned into a swamp. Gonna see a tap for three. There's a Psy Blast, but he can regenerate it. I'm a little bit surprised that he's not regenerating his own Zombie Master. He's got enough open here to just regenerate the Zombie Master and kill him. But he didn't do it. He lost the Zombie Master. I think he kind of didn't realize that he could just regenerate it for one black. I'm really surprised about this move. Or does he have better options? Does he have a Drain Life? Ho oh, ho from beyond. What a beautiful way to finish this game one. Ho ho ho. I love it, Neil. Um, let me know, by the way, if you're uh, looking at this video game one, uh, did you forget to regenerate or did you do it intentionally because you had better options? You just wanted to use your howl from beyond. Anyway, I think it's a super cool way to win this game one. And Trout, man, you were just 
unlucky. I, you need with your deck, you need two blue. Anyway, this is just game number one. Both players are going to go into their sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game a number two. Game a number two here is about to begin with Trout on the play after losing that first game. What an amazing finish that was by Neil with that Howl from Beyond. Look at the opener here by Trout. Mishra's Factory, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, and a pass turn. So this is a great start for him. I wonder if Neil can find another evil presence to kind of, uh, you know, take care of that factory. Look at that. Tapping a black. There's the evil presence. Bad news here for Trout. That means he's got a swamp. No counter spell. Taking a card for turn here. And this must be frustrating for uh, for Trout. All those evil presents, they work so well against him. Another island, tapping two here. There's a Chaos Orb, and he's not going to flip. That's interesting. I was kind of expecting maybe a flip here. But Trout choosing to wait. Tapping double black. There is a sinkhole on the island. And now, of course, Trout can respond, tapping the island. Could also play a counter spell, of course. I guess he doesn't have one. So Sinkhole taking care of that second blue. And again, Trout has the ability to flip on the evil presence so that he has double blue again, but chooses not to. I wonder if he can put some pressure on board. He cannot, just passing the turn. Oh my, things are not looking good for Trout. Is Neil going to cast the Zombie Master here? He's going to cast the uh, Limdul. Limdul's Cohort. So this is a 2-3 Zombie for 2 black and 1. There is another blue for Trout. And there's a Control Magic taking care of that Zombie. And this is, of course, great. Remember, Trout is playing with 4 Control Magics. I think these cards can be very dominant in this matchup. Because Neil is playing Mono Black, so it's very... Difficult for him to take care of the uh, control magics. I wonder if Neil boarded in the Nevenerals discs. So there we see a maze of if. So that's at least going to take care of the uh, attack coming in from the zombies. There's that zombie from Ice Age. A 2-2. And he can sack it to deal one damage to everybody and each creature. And if he has a snow-covered land, which he doesn't yet. And he sacks it, it deals two damage to everything. Let's see if Trout can find some more creatures. Or maybe another Control Magic. He can just take over all the zombies and attack Neil with his own army. And remember, Trout is playing with Phantasmal Terrain, so it would be quite sweet to see a Phantasmal Terrain on that Maze of If. He could, of course, also flip on the Maze if he wants to. Tapping two here, two blue. Are we going to see a Phantasmal Terrain? There's a Phantasmal Terrain. I'm loving this. I think it's such, it's just so cool to see the Phantasmal Terrain. It's it's a card you don't see often and that always ex excites me, you know, when I see cards that don't see a lot of play. He can attack now. Remember, his zombie is a 2-3. The zombie of Neil is just a 2-2, but he's not attacking though. That is interesting. I expected an attack here from Trout. Maybe he doesn't know it's a 2-3. I wonder what Neil's going to do here. Tapping one black. Does he have another evil presence? Okay, there's a Paralyze on the stolen zombie. That means he can at least attack for two. Swinging in for two. Going to put Trout on 18, the first damage. No flip from Trout. Just taking the damage. Going to drop to 18. Two cards in hand for Neil. Is he going to play another zombie maybe in his second main? Perhaps a zombie master, for example. And remember that one card that's that's uh, turned upside down, that's actually the Phantasmal Terrain Enchanted Land. So it's an island. Okay, he's switched it with an island. Yeah, that's probably better. Another control magic. Oh, and this is great timing by Trout because the zombie is tapped. So in response, Neil cannot sack the zombie. So this is a great timing by Trout taking over both zombies. And then next turn, he can start attacking Neil with his own zombie army. 
I think if you're Neil, you just really want to find an Evan Rose disc. But of course, if you cast it, Trout's probably going to flip on the disc. Tapping 4K. Okay, there we see the disc. So I wonder if Trout's now going to flip on it. I mean, if he doesn't, the bright side is that, you know, Trout's going to lose all his zombies. Any, or Neil's going to lose all his zombies. And, you know, Neil's also going to lose the Evil Presence, the Paralyze. It's actually not that bad, but he is going to flip. And that's a hit. Very good flip here by Trout. So the disc is gone. And then I guess Trout is going to untap his Limdul's Cohort as well. So he's going to untap his Lance. He isn't untapping the Zombie. Interesting. He is going to attack for two. So Neil's taking the first points of damage. He's going to go to 18 as well. Two cards in hand for Trout and a pass turn. Neil's going to go to 3, I believe. Does he have maybe another disc in hand? There is a snow-covered swamp. Tapping 4. Ooh, this is interesting. A Pestilence. We haven't seen that card yet. So that Pestilence can actually kill both creatures, but not yet. Remember, the Cohort is a 2-3. And the Ice Age Zombie is a 2-2. Two -two. One card in hand for Neil. He could, of course, decide to, to deal two damage to everything, killing the zombie on the side of Trout. That could be an option. Remember, Pestilence leaves play when there are no more creatures, so Neil has to think about that as well. I mean, if he passes the turn, Trout can untap his Ice Age zombie. Look at that. He's going to pay four. Trout is paying four to untap Limdul's cohort. So he wants to start swinging in for four points of damage. There's the attack. And now it would activate the Pestilence, killing the Ice Age zombie. So that one is a goner. And now he takes two damage. Or he doesn't. Okay, so I think what happened here is that in response, Trout said, I want to attack. Then Neil said, I'm going to activate the Pestilence. Then Trout said, in response, I'm going to sack the zombies, dealing one damage to each player and each creature. So that means that the Limdul's cohort also got a damage, and that's why it died. So that means three damage for Neil, and also three damage for Trout. So Trout on 15, and Neil also on 15. There we see a Mishra's Factory and a pass turn. So the board's kind of uh, cleaned up a little. Neil just passing the turn. Two cards in hand. So I'm expecting an attack. Yeah, there's an attack for two. So Neil's going to drop to 13. And just a pass. So this is good news for Trout. I mean, if he's got some counter magic up, he's probably really happy with uh, the way the game is uh, progressing. Attacking again, putting Neil on 11 or not. Neil looking at his hand, drawing a card for turn. There is a Blight obviously going there on the factory. And remember, Blight says the land is destroyed as soon as it becomes tapped. So as long as Trout just doesn't tap the factory, it still stays alive. But at least it stops him from attacking. So Neil now on 11, Trout on 15. This is game number two, one game up for Neil. Three cards in hand for Neil, and I believe two or three cards in hand for Trout as well. Kind of hard to see there. And Neil tapping three. Okay, there's the zombie again, Ice Age zombie, but there's a remove soul countering the zombie. So that zombie's going to the bin and just a pass. So both players kind of uh, looking for some creatures to attack with. Neil with three cards in hand passing the turn after just playing a swamp. Trout, I believe, having three cards in hand as well and passing the turn. Neil going up to four. Looks like he's found a zombie. He's going to cast something. There's a zombie master. Are we going to see another remove soul by Trout or just a regular counterspell? There's another remove soul. 
And there's just a the pass. I think for Neil, I do understand the strategy. You know, you just want to play out the cards sooner or later. Trout's gonna, you know, you know, Trout's gonna run through his counter magic. There we see a strip mine. And just a pass. So Trout has now played two remove souls and two control magics. He's playing four of each and four counter spells and a mana drain. So that's pretty brutal. There we see a strip mine on the side of Trout and a pass. And Neil just passing tourney with four cards in hand. And Trout also passing turn here. So both players kind of in top deck mode. And we could be in for another long game here. And a pass, I think. Five cards in hand and just a pass. I wonder what cards he's got in hand. Maybe a Paralyzed because he's got no targets for that. I'm sure if it would have been land removal, he would play it out. There is a Limdul's Cohort, the 2-3 Zombie. Are we going to see a Counterspell from Trout here? It looks like we're not. So no Counterspell. Does that mean that maybe he has a Control Magic? Just an Island and a Pass. So this is really good news for Neil. Because remember, Trout cannot pump his own factory because then it dies to the Blight. And the Limdul's Cohort is a 2-3 creature. So... You know, if, even if Trout wants to block on a factory, it's just a 2-2, it's going to die. Ooh, but this is interesting. He is using his strip mine there. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, as soon as you tap the land to, pump the, to let the factory pump itself to a 3-3, it's going to die. But perhaps I'm, I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments below. There's an attack here with the Cohort, so Trout's going to drop to 11. Howl from Beyond again! I love this card! Oh, Dark Ritual! 4, 6, 7... Oh, he's going to win it! Oh, man. Counterspell, though. Counterspell there on the Howl from Beyond. Oh, man, that is such a badass move here by Trout. He's just, he's just letting Neil play out all his Dark Rituals and go like, well, you know what, I'm just going to counter... But I have to say, Neil, um, you know, respect for trying. That would have been a phenomenal victory. It's not happening, though. Ooh, and is this... Oh, this is a Voldalian soldier. Okay, I thought it was another card for a moment. So, one, two creature, uh, a merfolk from uh, Fallen Empires. And there we see a Paralyze on the Voldalian soldier. And now Neil can just attack. But wow, that would have been such an amazing victory for Neil. But uh, it was not meant to be. And here we see Trout untapping his own Fildalian Soldier, paying the four and passing the turn. But things are still looking really good for Neil. I mean, Trout's on seven. I mean, if I was Neil, I would just attack here. I mean, the Fildalian Soldier is just a one-two. I wonder if he's going to chump here. Yeah, I think I would take the damage first as well. I mean, if, if he finds a Lord of Atlantis, the Voldalian Soldier will be a 2-3 and he can just block the zombie. So it's understandable that Trout has taken the damage. You're going to go down to 5, it seems. And I mean... Again, you know, it, it's looking really good for Neil, and, and that, that kind of surprises me. I mean, not that his deck is bad or anything, but after looking at both of the deck lists, I assumed that the power player would, would kind of win. And so far, so good for Neil. One game up, and it's looking really good here. Now, um, he's played a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, just a 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one vanilla. Tapping 3. Are we going to see a Zombie Master tapping 4? Oh, this is really good! Oh, this is really good. A Pestilence. This is really good. And look at that. Trout is saying you've won this one, but I mean, he hasn't won yet, has he? Well, I guess this is it, though. Trout is saying, you know what, you've got the match. That is interesting, because Trout was on five. I saw four mana open. I mean, oh yeah, of course, he could tap two, kill both creatures, then Neil could attack. 
put him on one and then he could use another swamp to kind of uh, d uh yeah finish the game so yes neil you have one it took me a moment to realize that but wow what an unbelievable matchup and a big congratulations to neil and i mean let me know in the comments below if you think i was wrong by saying that trout was the favorite maybe i was wrong maybe it was a mistake uh, maybe i underestimated neil's deck anyway I really enjoyed watching this video. Thank you, Trout, and thank you, Neil, for uh, bringing your decks right here uh, to the table and showing it here on Timmy Talks. And also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Now, before you go, please take a moment to uh, to like, to share, and of course, to subscribe if you're not uh, subscribed yet. I would really, really appreciate it. All these things are completely free, and they really help the channel move forward. Now. If you enjoy what you're seeing and if you want to join in on these tournaments, you can also become a patron of the show. How does that work? It's quite simple. There's probably an info card appearing right now. Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can join the Patreon program for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you can join the Timmy Talks Discord, you can join the tournaments, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. Now, before I take you to the end scroll with all our lovely channel members and patrons that support the channel, I would just like to say one thing. This was the last video of the Tribal Wars tournaments. So we've had four beautiful matches. And maybe you're wondering, wait a minute, where's the finals? Well, we actually did a live stream of the finals when it was held at the time. So you probably see another info card popping up right now with the link to that final. So if you wanna watch the final of the Tribal Wars, just click on the info card or check the description below for the link. Have fun and now let's go to the end scroll. Ich kann das Fingertisch zum Bakasin.